Can you imagine the size of this thing? Look, I'm at Thermalright and I came here thinking that I was going to do air coolers and AIOs and everything else that they're known for. But then they hit me with this and this and a couple of other systems. So they don't have any names for these PCs yet or the mini PCs, but they are hitting that mini PC market hard. They're going after the guys like Mini's Forum. They're going after the, I guess, Asus now, Nux. This one is the most interesting to me right now, but the other ones have very, very high specifications compared to this. So what you've got in here is you have an integrated liquid loop. This is actually going to be the world's first mini PC with an integrated AIO. You can actually see a little bit through here, you've got the copper radiator. That is backed by a 120 millimeter fan, a very slim fan, and fronting that again is the motherboard. So you have this sort of like sandwich configuration that makes it so, so compact. It's an open frame design, so this is what they will actually be manufacturing. The CPU that's being used in here right now is an 8845HS, but they actually plan to ship it with an HX370, a Ryzen AI 7. HX 370, thank you AMD for having the most confusing names on the planet. But anyways, down here you have a combo distribution plate and pump. You can see in between here is the contact plate for the CPU. Now, they're going to originally be shipping this as a bare bone with only the CPU, but accessing the memory and SSDs, that's pretty easy. That's on the back. You have dual M.2 SSDs here and removable sodium memory. You might be asking yourself, what is the price of all this? Look, you've got this beautiful metal open case. The color, beautiful color. They are going to start this at around $499. And the bare bone system is actually going to be a little bit less. So for $499, what you get is the 8845HS right now, 16 gigabytes of memory, and a one terabyte M.2 drive pre-installed. Let us know any type of name that you want. Look at this, you've got full I.O. on the back, dual lands, a little LCD on the front that shows you all of the temperatures that you need to know. Anyways, on to the next thing. Again, we're going to go over here and these are, I guess, a little bit more of the, uh, the desktop style mini PCs, not so far out there with the design, but these, these are based on Strix Halo. They are targeting that higher end productivity AI processing market or people who just want a basic gaming PC. But their approach is here and with the larger one to have a very, very integrated design. So on the top, I guess three quarters here, that is considered their cooling chamber. Inside of this one in particular, there's an integrated 140 millimeter AIO. So the upper portion here holds your fan and the radiator itself. Meanwhile, all of the components that you need for the motherboard are down below. This one that's a little bit bigger has a Ryzen AI, no, wait, Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 with 128 gigabytes of memory and a two terabyte SSD in there. There's also additional space for a second SSD. Unfortunately, the memory is soldered. That's what happens with a lot of strict Halo systems in order to get the maximum bandwidth possible between the memory and the CPU over that 256 bit in interface. Now, what we're looking at for price with this Typically, we're seeing higher end mini PCs go upwards of $2,500. There's not many out there right now with the AI Max Plus series. This one is going for $1,999 and it's gonna start shipping in around the July timeframe. They're being very aggressive with this, guys. Other thing with the smaller one here, this is 120 millimeter base. This is not going to get Strix Halo at this point in time. They're looking at the AI 370, the AI HX3, bro, AMD, listen to me. This isn't working. You're, you're trying to appleify your naming. If it's not working for me, it's not working for your customers, all right? You still get that integrated LCD screen in the front of this one, but it is going to get the HX370 CPU, so you don't have that massive amount of GPU compute or the memory bandwidth like you do with Strix Halo. But for this one, it will absolutely positively be under 999 with 16 gigabytes of memory and minimum a one terabyte SSD. You still get that dual chamber design. They weigh a ton. Speaking of the ITX market, Thermalright always has some gems for you guys. 
This year, it is a full LCP fan. So what they're doing here is they're bringing all of the learnings from the larger 120 millimeter and 140 millimeter models and miniaturizing it. So the L what the LCP allows them to do is maximize static pressure airflow at given decibel levels. Very advanced designs. Actually, I think this is the first LCP or fully LCP based fan that I've seen in 92 millimeter size. Anyways, what they are hooking it up to is their new AXP90 X6, no, sorry, not X63, X, I'm running out of, I'm running out of battery life already. It's only halfway through the day. Anyways, what they're hooking it up to is their new AXP90 X53 Pro. Now the Pro includes the LCP based fan and a brand new fin stack that's been modified a little bit in order to give you a updated mounting procedure. It's a lot more straightforward than the older versions of the AXP90. Now the other thing that I wanted to talk about here with the LCP fan, a lot of people have been asking us, you see these little brown dots on there, right? Those little brown dots. What in the world are those? Well, for thermal right at least, they sort of act like those balancing stickers that you put on wheels. What this allows them to do is individually balance every single one of these fans so they're just right. And that sort of very, very small tolerance between the LCP frame and the side of the blades, that doesn't come into any contact and it also allows them to minimize it quite a bit, extending the blades forward. And speaking of LCP fans, they've got a new one. This is the N12 R9 series. It's going to be available up to 28 millimeters thick. There's also a standard thickness size, but this is their flagship LCP based fan running at around 2500 RPM. Now, this fan is going to be available individually for $15 or a three pack for 45 bucks. That's very, very good when you consider its stats. Like a lot of other manufacturers, when they create a new fan, it cascades down or at least it creates a platform for a bunch of other cooling devices. So let's look at one of those. Am I really close? Oh, that looks pretty good. All right. So one of those is what is going to be Thermal Wright's flagship cooler for the time being. They put this very much into perspective for me. They're really not gunning for the D15 G2s of this world. They are gunning for price to performance and availability as well. So what they want to do is offer the maximum performance at a given dollar point. So the Frost Commander 140 is going to be a $50 cooler that is the best that they can offer with the fan technology that they have. So they're taking that LCP fan, they're putting it on here. This is a 120 millimeter fan in the front to maximize memory compatibility, as well as a 140 in the middle as well. That 140 is also an LCP based design with that ring around there in order to maximize airflow, in order to maximize static pressure as well. The other thing that they've done with this is they've increased the thickness of their fin stack. So again, all towards offering the best possible performance, but not making a massive, massive cooler that won't fit into many cases. It has seven heat pipes and those heat pipes have been soldered into the base and the fin stacks as well in order to increase the thermal conductivity. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, where does this land versus something like that Royal Praetor Ultra that we've been waiting for since last Computex? Well, the Royal Praetor Ultra is still sort of being fine-tuned, but it will ultimately land below the Frost Commander 140. The last thing I wanted to mention is an AIO over there that also uses the same fan design and it's got a couple of unique characteristics. So this is the Stream Vision AIO and I've actually just been told that there's a slight difference here. So this might be the R9 fan with nine blades. This is the R7, so it's a derivative thereof. Basically, they want to use the R7 for this because based on the radiator design and the fin density, this is supposed to offer a little bit more optimized performance than what we have here. So the interesting thing about a lot of the thermal right AIOs is they're using IPS LCDs for their display. This is something that we see throughout their lineup and it's very important to mention because a lot of the other manufacturers tend to use TN panels. We've seen the comments in the videos, why in the world is the viewing angle so bad on some of these? Well, that's because a lot of manufacturers are cheaping out a little bit. Meanwhile, thermal right across their lineup is going with IPS. Anyways, this cooler is supposed to land at the very top of their lineup as well. So the flagship status, sort of like that Frost Commander 140 that we saw 
just a couple of seconds ago. Another thing that I have to mention here is, again, we've seen this. This is permeating every single AIO that has an LCD screen. They're taking that opportunity to offer additional airflow over the CPU socket area. In this case, once again, very, very easy to pop this back on without knocking it over. And you've got your LCD screen going. To round this all up, I hear that Dimitri has a, what is it, Eber? Hey. It's a case. Eber, we have another case for you to review. All right, another case, let's go. You know Thermal, right? Yeah. We're there. <laughs> this is their first enclosure. Guess the price. Just a regular mid-tower. It is micro ATX, it's not full ATX, by the way. At first I thought, I'm like, wait a second. You can't fit a full-size motherboard in here. It is micro ATX only. Micro 59.99. Nope, cheaper, 45 bucks. 45 bucks. So this is the M10, a micro ATX enclosure that has some cost cutting that is visible. For example, the ventilation pattern on the bottom of the power supply shroud is different versus the rear ventilation pattern, which is round versus square. I mean, it's a, a little details like that that matter, but interestingly, they've added a lot of value add to, to the enclosure that makes this $45 case actually quite competitive. So we have RGB strips at the top and at the bottom of the power supply shroud. It will come in black and white. Plus, look at this rear panel. <laughs> is shaped like the Thermalite logo. Interior-wise, nothing special here. We do have side ventilation for 3120s for intake or exhaust and nothing in the front because the whole idea is for that visual consistency. And now let's go check out this awesome nine inch display that is optional, but from a $45 enclosure, if you are getting the screen, it's going to be a $75 case. All the software is just with USB 2 internal header with their own uh, driver. So from that point of view, it's a pretty decent addition just to spice up this whole M10 configuration. And we also have a built-in digital display at the front over here. It will display only time and date information, and that is included in that base price of $45. And overall, as a $45 enclosure, I feel like they've done a good job for the micro ATX segment, especially because that's blowing up here at Computex this time. And for them to release their first ever enclosure that is in that segment, I guess it kind of makes sense. They're rolling with the times, but there's also something absolutely off-brand here. Let's go check it out. These are mod cases, and normally Thermalright is known for their absolutely competitively priced, like $35 CPU cooler that beats out anything like twice and triple this price. And here is something that I was not expecting. For example, here's mod one. Guess how much this would cost? Just the enclosure, open style frame, full CNC aluminum, beautiful anodized sand blasting. This case is gonna be $400 from the same brand. This guy here is a little bit more unique. With, they're really flexing their design muscles over here. It's rugged, it's gold and black, it's gorgeous. This is $500 just in production cost. So probably 600 plus in terms of price. And we also have the slightly bigger one, which is the Mod 3, has really interesting tempered glass elements, uh, reconfigurable power button, for example, that you can shift either up or down or anywhere else on the enclosure that you'd want. This is $1,000 in cost production. So Thermal Ride doing something on this is totally exciting because it kind of opens up opportunities, but it's also like, I would not want to put a $50 Thermal Ride air cooler in there because the case is just, I don't know, so unique. But let us know what you think. I'm Dimitri, I'll talk to you in the next video.